How you doing, bro? Hey, what's your name? Kato. Uh, you said Kato? What's going on, Kato? I'm Amos. It's good to meet you, bro. So let me ask you a question. First of all, do you believe in God? No, let me get some. You believe in you believe in the Most High, okay? All praise. You say Yahshua, okay? All praise to the Most High. But do you know what what nationality you are? That's correct. I'm a blood. They say more, but I I just say I'm a digital American Indigenous Aboriginal. Okay. You, you said you believe in the Most High. Hey, what's going on, bro? How you doing? I'm Amos. So we're talking about nationality right now. My man was saying that his nationality is indigenous Aboriginal American. What do you say yours is? African American. Okay, so just take a look at that. Y'all both look alike. Y'all look like you could be brothers, right? We all got some similarities. But at the end of the day, if I ask 10 brothers, what's your nationality? I'm gonna probably get eight to 10 different answers like we just got right here, okay? Now, do you believe in the Bible? Yes, so we got two Bible-believing brothers, right? Now, in the Bible, does it call you African-American? Can you read about that in the scriptures? Can you read about American indigenous aborigines in the Bible? No, we can't. So why is that? Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and 3. Why is it that we don't know who we are? Because I can guarantee you this. Okay, that's one part of it. But I can guarantee you this. If I went to a Japanese dude and said, what's your nationality? He gonna say, I'm Japanese. If I went to somebody from France and said, what's your na nationality? They gonna say, I'm French. But when we come to our people, the so-called blacks and Hispanics in this land, we don't know who we are. And we want to find out that this is a prophecy in the Bible. God actually spoke of this thing thousands of years ago. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. So right now, what God is using is some analogies. And he's using animals. He said, first of all, an ox. So an ox, what's, what's some of the characteristics of an ox? Like, you ever heard the term, you dumb as an ox, right? So an ox is a dumb animal, right? And what's the other animal he mentioned? And the ass, his master's crib. So the jackass or the donkey, they're called stubborn, you know, stubborn as a mule. So we got our people being described as dumb oxes and as stubborn mules or stubborn asses, right? So this is what the Bible is talking about when it's talking about the people of God. But at least the ox knows his master, and at least the dumb ass knows where he's from. He knows his lineage. If you take a donkey and take him a thousand miles away from his home, he'll figure his way out to get back home. Now, what is our homeland? Uh, America is where we are now, but where do we come from? Northwest of Exum. Where'd you get that information? Is that, is that in the scripture? You grab oh, you don't where you got it from. Okay. The Moors. Okay, I got you. So do you know what the word Moors means? Moor just means black. That's all. It means. Right. Okay. So let's get back to the point though. We're talking about who we are, where we come from. We come from a land called Israel, Jerusalem. And we were ran out of that land into Africa. The, the Roman armies came in to destroy God's people, so we had to flee and hide amongst people who look like us. Don't we have the same complexion as Africans? So that's where we were hiding. Hey, Shalom, Sister Shalom. Yeah, it's, it's so, so basically, you just, it's semantic. What you said is correct. But let's let's really stick to the point. I want y'all to I got this, I got it. Uh -huh. Give me five more minutes. Give me five more minutes. Okay. Whoa. So the point is this. God's people are the Israelites according to the Bible, and we don't know who we are. Read that again from the top. Read this and tell me if this don't talk about us. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider. So like we said, you can go and talk to any number of different nationalities and they're gonna know who they are. But when we talk to our people like we just did, we don't know. Tell me the reason. Oh. Oh, yeah. My brother 
say that because we don't educate ourselves. But I'm going to just share this with you. The reason why is because the people of God are cursed. We're cursed because we love to commit sin. We love to do every single thing that God has told us not to do. We were not created to be on the bottom of society. We were actually created to be above everybody on the face of the earth. But because we chose not to keep the laws of God, because we chose to keep on sinning against him, this is what happened to us. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, 15. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if, the, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Bible just said we're going to be cursed if what? He said if we don't hearken, meaning listen, to the words of God, which we find right here in this Bible, he's going to curse us. Now, do you feel like in this day and age our people are blessed or yeah. cursed? Blessed. You think blessed and you think cursed. All right. So that's, I'm glad you said that, bro. Tell me how we're blessed in this day and age. Okay, that's a blessing. But now, think about it from this perspective. If God created you to be a king, a God on this earth, but yet and still we live in the ghettos. You look around our neighborhoods and we see trash everywhere. You look in our neighborhoods and you see the worst food supply, the worst water supplies, the worst education. Does that sound like a blessed people or does it sound like people who are cursed? Sound like people that's cursed. Now, is a curse a good thing or is it a bad thing? That's a bad thing, right? So once again, let's listen to the prophecy. Read it again for the brother so he can understand why God has decided to curse his people. Read that. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Read. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments. Some of his commandments. All his commandments. Read. And his statutes, which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So when we look at these curses that God has put upon us, take a look at these signs. Look at this one. We're called the southern kingdom of Israel because we were all one nation. But then because of sin, because our forefather Solomon sinned and had many wives, we ended up having the kingdom split as God prophesied would take place. So what happened eventually is we went into what is this? Slavery. That's a curse. Who put us into this slavery? Okay, well, now say that again. Absolutely. You got you got some knowledge, my brother. You're, you're right, but yeah, this is this is our people right here. But I want you to take a look at this sign and see what's happening to our people. Now my brother said we were enslaved by white people, right? We were enslaved by a lot of other nations. We didn't went in and out of slavery throughout our history because the people of God are stubborn, self-willed, hard-headed. We always want to do what we want to do. For example, today is the Sabbath. Do y'all know about the Sabbath? You know what? You know about the Sabbath? Do you know that there's laws on what we can and can't do on the Sabbath? One of the things that I'm looking at right now looks like you just went and bought some paper towel on the Sabbath, right? Well, God says we are not to buy and sell on this day. Today is the Holy Sabbath. These are things that we continue to do because of the lack of knowledge and because of the fact that we are stubborn. We way behind. But you're right. But guess what, bro? How long is that going to be our excuse? How long are we going to continue to stay away from the laws of God? We try to wake our people up and correct our status. Right. Right. That's right. So, uh, hold what you got. Stay right there. Stay right there and do the run. Stay right there and do the run. But I want you to give me a hold on, hold on, bro. Let me get you uh, Isaiah 58 and 1. Let me tell you, this is another prophecy from God. Not broke. Read this. Nobody is. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Read. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Because my brother just said that we have to wake up the people. We have to make sure that they understand who they are and what their 
responsibilities are as the Israelites, the chosen people of God. So God told us, my brother, my brother, God told us to come out here and be on this microphone and sound like a trumpet and scream out to the people of God. Read on. And so my people, their transgression. So God said the reason why we're out here is to show my brothers their sins, their transgressions the breaking of God's law. So that's why we out here. Because the sins and the transgressions is what got us cursed in the first place. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. So do y'all understand that that's the reason why we're in the position we're in? You do? That does make sense. So, right, but, but let me show you where it came from. Bro, bro, come on, come on over a little bit closer. You back it up, bro. Let me show you where that came from. Because we like to think, as my brother said, it's the white man's fault. It's everybody else's fault. But God, first of all, told us that if we didn't do what he told us to do, he was going to be the one to curse us. Right? Ain't that what we just read? Go down to uh, verse number, what is it, 48? Start, start at 45. Start at 45. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. So the Bible says all of these curses are going to come on God's people until we're destroyed. Does that mean until we're all dead? No. It means until we're destroyed mentally. Now, take a look around our neighborhoods. Aren't our people destroyed mentally? Uh, look, on every look on every corner. We got we got brothers. We got brothers that will put another brother to death because he stepped on his shoes. We got brothers raping their own people. They may have daughters and mothers and aunties at home, but then they'll go out and rape one of their own sisters or snatch them up and send them into trafficking just to make a few dollars. Our people are destroyed. That mindset is absolute foolishness. We would much rather come out on the Sabbath and go shopping and smoke weed and get drunk than to hear the words of God. Because we've seen thousands of people ride by this place and walk into these businesses that shouldn't be open today. We've seen all these people go by, but only two are here. Only two came to listen to the words of God. So all praises to the most high for you, brothers. But the problem is this, even as you stand here, there are things that you all don't know because you're still breaking laws right where you stand. So that's the reason why my brother brought you over here, so we can teach you the things that you're doing wrong, so you can stop doing them, and we can get the hell out of this captivity. So y'all want to learn about some of these laws today to find out what you can do to fix it right now? Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, because my brother, Everything that we're talking about is the sins of God's people. Y'all hold that and get 1 John 3 and 4. Because I want to, do you know what sin is? When you do a bad thing. When you do a bad thing. Okay, see, that, that answer, that's subjective. Because what I might think is bad, you might not think is bad. So we have to get the answers from the Bible. We have to know what God says is sin so that we can stop doing it. Because he's the one who created us, right? He's the one who put us in captivity. Read what you got. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Read. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. What did the Bible say sin is? Transgression of the law. Of God's law. Transgression simply means to go against or to break. So what is sin? Breaking or going against God's law, right? So now, when we look at the laws of God, there's so many sins that are going on today. But right now, I'm focusing on YouTube because you're here to listen. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So Christ is the head of who? man. So all the men you see out here, including yourselves, Christ is your head. Y'all understand that? 
appropriate, and the head of the woman is the man. So who's the head of the woman? The man. The man is the head of the woman. What? In today's age, is that the case? Absolutely not. Because we got sisters who want to run things. We got sisters who want to rule their household. Sisters who want to run for president and control the entire nation. But God said what? Read that verse again. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Sisters, the head of the woman is the man. Keep that in mind as we go forward. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And even Jesus Christ himself, Yahshua, as my brother calls him, he has a head. His head is the most high God. So if he got a head, why do we have a problem with having a head? We shouldn't. Most brothers understand that Christ is our head, but it's our sisters who don't want to be under a man. we got to change that mentality in our city, in our nation, amongst our people. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So wait a minute. Who's the man's head? Who's the head of the man? We learn that the head of the woman is the man. And we learn that Christ's head is the most high God. But who's the man's head? No, who is the who's the one over the man? You remember? Read it again from the top. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who's the head of the man? The man is Christ. All right. All right. The head of the man, is Christ. Of the man is Christ. Right? Now jump back down to the other part. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. Every man that's praying or prophesying. Give me Revelation 19. We have to understand what that, that scripture means, to be praying or prophesying. Okay, while we're out here teaching the Bible, we're teaching about Jesus Christ. We are Israel united in Christ. That's what we're all about. So we are prophesying about Jesus Christ. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Read. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. What? The testimony of Jesus. Read. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So this Bible is the testimony of Jesus Christ. The entire Bible is written about him, and the scriptures just told us that this Bible is the spirit of prophecy. We're prophesying about Christ. So go back to that verse 4 in 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. So every man out here right now that's in the spirit of prophecy as we teach about Jesus Christ. Having his head covered. That has his head covered. Dishonoreth his head. You dishonor Christ. Do y'all want to dishonor Christ? You want to dishonor Jesus, the head of, of all men? So what should you be doing right now? You should be uncovering your heads. Right now on the spot. That's why I say, uh, All praise to the most high. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth